everyone, Sue here from 1A Auto, and today we have our 2013 Camry in the shop. It's got the V6 3.5 liter in it, and I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the downstream O2 sensor. That would be bank one, sensor two. If you need that part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. To take the undercarriage shield down, we're going to need a 10 millimeter socket and a body clip tool. Uh, this car has had the shield down, somebody replaced so for the most part, it should be a 10 millimeter socket, but this one someone put in, they are actually standard 13 or half inch socket, so I'm just gonna take them down. Switch over to the 10. So you're gonna do the same per side. So there's those three bolts with that little rubber vent, just directs the airflow. You're gonna take those down and then you're gonna have one, two, three, four across the front and then one body clip. I'm gonna do the body clip. There's the R for right side, passenger side. And the L for left side. Now we're gonna replace the downstream O2 sensor on our 13 Camry with a 3.5 liter, that's the V6. And we're doing the downstream bank one. So if you were to look it up, someone could call it bank one downstream or B1S2. So S2 means for um, sensor two. So the downstreams are always considered the sensor two, not as an also, but as in the number two. So you have your one bank and you have bank two, bank one and bank two. We're gonna be working on bank one downstream O2 sensor. Um, this one's nice and easy, it's out in the open. Um, so what I do is you get a black clip and a gray clip. Once I identified which one I'm replacing, that's gonna be the gray clip on this bracket. So I'm gonna push down on this tab here. And I like to use a pair of pliers. Sometimes I just can't get it to pull. So I just grab it lightly and pull that out. Toyota, this Toyota has an actual metal bracket that holds the wires in place, so that way it stops it from hitting the exhaust while you get on the road. So now I just have to fish that out of that bracket, bring that sensor, the wire down, and then there is the sensor itself in the exhaust pipe. And that's gonna be a 22 millimeter or a oxygen sensor socket. I'm gonna use an oxygen sensor socket, and that's a specialty socket that was opened up almost like a crow's foot or a tubing wrench crow's foot. And you slide that down over the harness. Settle down on that, right where the octagon, hectagon is. And then you're just gonna give it a quick tug and break it free. Now, uh, if yours is really in there, you know, it's hard to get. You can use a little map gas, you can heat it up. Um, if you're, that's if you're at home, if you're a homeowner. You should have a little can of map gas for like if you do soldering for a little plumbing. If not, you can get one at a hardware store, pretty cheap. And you just wanna heat up this section of it and then break it free. So here we have our new O2 sensor from 1A Auto. And here we have the factory O2 sensor on our 13 Camry 3.5 liter. Uh, the new one will have a little bit longer length to it. That's very common with aftermarket O2 sensors. Um, they just wanna give you a little bit more just to make sure that it's better to have more than less because if it doesn't reach, it's not gonna work. O2 sensor, the new one comes with this protective cover because it has a little thread lock or any C's on the actual threads. So you don't wanna get that everywhere. But you can look real quick and see that they're the same depth. They have the same cutout. They have cutouts for the, that's where the, the oxygen sensor shell you say takes a sniff and does the reading. But the most important part is down here and you'll see that the connectors match. That's what you're looking for. You wanna make sure those connectors match and it will work. So you don't wanna get through this job and find out that the connector doesn't fit in there. So before you always start an O2 sensor, I strongly recommend matching up the skin connector before you take it out. So if you need this part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. Before I put my O2 sensor in, the new one, 
I knew it came out pretty smooth. If you have one that's really rough coming out, take a good look at the threads here. Make sure there's threads still in the exhaust pipe because I've seen them stripped out completely, just in case you weren't the last one in there. Um, these look pretty good and you'll, you'll be able to feel it as you start this new one. You wanna feel the threads grab, fall right into place basically. You should have no problem doing that by hand if it gets really rough. They do make a tap for oxygen sensors, a specific one, size and everything, but hopefully you don't need to purchase that for a one-time deal. But you want those threads to be cleaned up. Make sure that that goes in nice and tight. Now I'm just gonna get my socket, reverse the direction. And it has a crush washer on it, so even though you think it's tight, it just keeps going. And you wanna, it's just like a spark plug. So you wanna bottom it out, and once it bottoms out on that crush washer, you're gonna give it another little quarter of a turn to an eighth of a turn. So that's the washers down, crushed. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take my wire, and I'm gonna feed it up through here. And I'm gonna put it in that bracket Make sure it pinches in that, that connector because I don't want it resting against my exhaust. I'm going to look at my connector and see that that's where the tab is, the lock tab. Guide it in that way and then click it together. Now with the excess type of wire, I want to make sure I root that so that I know I have a plastic shield, but the shield only comes to here. So I'm not going to be wanting this wire hanging down like that. So I'm gonna see if I can double it up in a loop. I don't wanna pinch the wires, so this is where it comes a little tricky and try to do your best without damaging the, the actual wire. And I'm just rerouting it back past this bracket that this manufacturer actually supplies. And I'm putting it into the actual, it's almost like a paper clip. I guess that's what I would say, the design that they did here. So I just basically looped it so that the excess is up inside there. Now my wire's not hanging down, nothing's gonna catch it, and it's not up hitting on the converter. That looks pretty good. When I put the shield back up, I've got the R for right side, which would be the passenger side. You can see the cutout of the fender well right here. So I'm going to guide it in. So you want the tab from the bumper underneath, and you wanna put all these little flares up under like that. So I'm going to put one bolt in and hold it. And then I'm going to go over here and I've got my fender guide here. So that's going to go on top there, then that one. Now this has that rubber piece, remember? I'm going to get my electric gun with my 10 millimeter socket. the same on the driver's side, which is the plastic that says L. So that's going to go overlap up inside. And the one time, the one piece I put on, <laughs> the one bolt I tighten up, of course, like that, up inside the fender flare. There we go. So now I can take my rubber piece here that up. I'm going to make sure I line that up. Okay, up in the front here. Get this one. Get this one that overlaps. So this piece is going to go down underneath it. And then we have a push pin that I'm going to put in right here. And then the last one is a replacement push pin. 
There Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.